aliens. Mr Miller was in his joke shop. Tony and Tessa came in and began to look around. Can I help you? asked Mr Miller. We want to buy a joke, said Tony. Yes, said Tessa, a really good one, something unusual. Mr Miller looked around the stocked shelves of his shop and thought for a moment. He took a box down from one of them and put it on the counter. How about masks, he said, as he took two from the box. He held them up to show the twins. They were very shiny and they looked like the faces of robots. These will make you look like aliens, said Mr Miller, as Tony and Tessa took the masks from him. Put them on and people will think that you are strange creatures from another planet. The twins tried the masks on and looked at each other. You look really weird, said Tony. So do you, said Tessa. We'll have some fun with these. Tony and Tessa were pleased. They thanked Mr Miller paid for the masks and left the shop. Who should we try the masks out on? said Tessa. Let's go to the park and play a joke on Fred, said Tony. That's a good idea, said Tessa. I bet we give Fred an awful fright. The twins went into the park looking for Fred. They saw him outside his shed cleaning the windows. Tony and Tessa put on the masks and crept up quietly behind Fred. He didn't hear them, but he didn't seem all that surprised when they jumped out on him. We are aliens, they said, trying to make their voices sound like robots. We have come to clean up this planet. Fred went on polishing the windows of his shed. That's good, he said. You can clean up the park first. People are always dropping litter. You can clean that up. The twins walked away, feeling pretty disappointed. Fred didn't think we were aliens, said Tessa. Who else could we play the joke on? If the joke didn't work on Fred, then it won't work on anybody, said Tony glumly. Let's pick up the litter. At least it'll give us something to do. The twins wandered around the park, picking up empty crisp packets, sweet papers and bits of old newspaper. They had to admit that Fred was right. People were very careless and dropped a lot of litter instead of putting it in the litter bins. Well, I think that's got most of it, said Tessa. Yes, said Tony, looking around. Oh no, he said. There's a lot under this bench. The twins got down on their hands and knees and began to clean the litter from under the bench. Look here, said Tessa. This isn't rubbish. It's a letter. Someone must have dropped it. She looked at the name on the envelope. It's for Mrs Nash. That's the old lady who lives at number 23. Mrs Nash. I don't want to go there. People say she's mad. Well, we must give her the letter. We can't just throw it away. It might be important. Come on, Tony. Let's go right away. She might be worried about losing her letter. Tony and Tessa made their way out of the park and along to number 23. Tony walked very slowly and Tessa had to keep telling him to hurry up. When they arrived outside the gate, Tony wouldn't go up the path. We could just put it through the letterbox, he said. Before Tessa could say anything, the door of number 23 opened. Mrs Nash came out wearing her coat carrying a shopping bag. She was reading a shopping list. At first she didn't notice the twins. When she saw them standing at the gate she gave a scream and pushed open the door. Ah! Go away! she shouted. Go away you monsters! With that, she banged the door shut and the twins could hear her turning the key in the lock. They hadn't had time to say anything about the letter. What on earth was that all about, said Tony. I told you she was mad. Oh no, said Tessa. It must have been the masks that frightened her. I forgot that we, were still, we still had them on. She thought we were aliens. 
we'd better take these masks off and try and explain to her. The twin twins quickly took the masks off and went up the garden path. They knocked on the door, but there was no reply. There she is, said Tony. She's looking out of the window. Tessa looked and she could see Mrs Nash peeping out from behind the nets. The twins went over to the window, holding up the masks to show Mrs, Mrs. Nash what they were. Look, they said, we're not aliens. We bought these masks from the joke shop. We're sorry if they gave you a fright. But Mrs Nash was too afraid to look. As soon as she saw them coming to the window, she quickly shut the curtains. Oh dear, said Tessa. Now what are we going to do? We can't just leave her shut up in the house, too frightened to come out. At that moment, a policeman was going by. It was P.C. Kent, who was a local constable. The twins knew him well. In fact, everyone in Wellington Square did. He stopped when he saw the twins in Mrs. Nash's garden. As the situation looked a little strange... Tony and Tessa were looking quite worried and holding some very peculiar looking masks and Mrs Nash's curtains were closed even though it was in the middle of the day. Now what have those kids been up to? thought PC Kent as he walked up to the gate. What are you kids doing in that garden? Are you frightening poor old Mrs Nash? PC Kent looked sternly at the twins. Both the twins began talking at once, trying to tell P.C. Kent exactly what had happened. Just hold on, he said. I can't understand a word you say if both of you talk at once. Now, Tessa, you tell me what this is all about. Tessa took a deep breath and began to tell the policeman all about buying the masks, clearing the litter out of the park, finding the letter for Mrs. Nash. We didn't mean to frighten her, but we forgot that we were still wearing these masks. She must have thought we were aliens, finished Tessa. PC Kent could see exactly what had happened. Well, you better come with me and we'll try and sort this out. If we don't convince Mrs Nash that we haven't been invaded by strange creatures from another planet, then goodness knows how long she'll stay in the house. PC Kent did not look quite so stern now, and Tony and Tessa were very relieved that he'd come along to help them out. The policeman walked over to the door with Tony and Tessa following closely behind. He knocked very firmly and called in a loud, clear voice, Mrs Nash, it is the police. Please open this door. You will be quite safe. They waited for a minute or two, but nothing happened. P.C. Kent looked, knocked again. Look through the window, Mrs. Nash, and you will be able to see me. Slowly, the curtains opened, and Mrs. Nash peered out. When she saw that it really was P.C. Kent, she came to the door. The twins heard her turning the key in the lock, and she opened the door a little. Tony and Tessa hid behind the policeman. It was their turn to be frightened now. Have they gone? asked Mrs Nash. Have those monsters gone? They're not monsters, said PC Kent kindly. They're just kids. He moved to one side so that Mrs Nash could see Tony and Tessa. They didn't come here to frighten you, said the policeman. They came to give you a letter that they found in the park. They thought it might be important, but they were so anxious to give it to you that they forgot they were wearing those silly masks. Mrs Nash looked at the twins and smiled. Well, you certainly gave me a fright, she said, but it was very kind of you to come and give me the letter. I must have dropped it when I was sitting in the park this morning. It's from my daughter telling me when she is coming to stay. Anyway, do come inside and have some orange juice and a biscuit. Tony and Tessa were not too keen to go inside the house. They were still a little afraid of Mrs Nash and thought of all the stories they'd heard of her being mad. PC Kent saw that they were afraid, but he pushed them through the door saying, Do you think you could find a cup of tea and a biscuit for me? 
certainly, said Mrs Nash. Come in. Tony and Tessa soon realised that Mrs Nash was not mad at all. She was just an old lady who got very lonely living on her own. They enjoyed their drink and biscuit and they promised to visit her again soon. Mind you, she said, when you come, don't wear those masks. I thought you were monsters from out of space. You gave me a terrible fright. The twins smiled, but they didn't tell her that they had been frightened too.